Hello friends, welcome to Vikyan Dhar. Here we are with the next video of MSc Botany paper, Delhi University 2020. The first question is, a name in which the specific epithet exactly repeats the generic name is called? Our correct option is D, that is totonym. One of the examples of totonym is ratus ratus. Here, the specific epithet exactly repeats the generic name. The next question is an ovule which becomes curved so that the nucellus and embryo sac lie at right angles to the funicle is. As in the given picture, the orthotropous ovule is the ovule which is completely straight with the micropyle at its apex. In case of anatropous ovule, the ovule is completely inverted, which is turned back 180 degrees on its stalk. In case of campylotropous ovule, the body of ovule is curved and bent around so that the micropyle and chalaza they do not lie in the same straight line. While in the case of hemitropous ovule, the ovule which becomes curved so that the nucellus and embryo sac lie at right angles to the funicle. And the body of the ovule in this case is placed transversely at right angles to the funicle and the micropyle and chalaza lie in one straight line. So our correct option is A, that is hemitropous ovule. The next question is, endothelium is derived from, a correct option is B, that is inner integument. This is because the endothelium it is an additional layer differentiating from the inner epidermis of the ovule integument. The next question is, a bisporic embryo sac derived from the chalazal diet is as we know the bisporic embryo sacs are eight nucleated and seven celled there are of two types one is alien type and second is admin type in the case of alien type the embryo sac is derived from chalazal diet while in the case of endmian type the embryo sac is formed from micropylar diet so our correct option is B, that is alien type. The next question is, a 16 nucleate embryo sac having 3 celled egg apparatus and 11 antipodes is characterized as? The correct option is B, that is drusa type. In this type, the organization of nuclei may vary due to irregularity in the divisions. One of the examples of this type is rubia. The next question is, which one of the following statements about hydrophily is incorrect? Hydrophily is the mode of pollination through the agency of water. And the main characteristics of hydrophilus flowers are they are small flowers and inconspicuous, unwettable parient and other floral parts. So, according to the explanation, option B, that is, flowers are large and pregnant, is incorrect. So, our correct answer is B. The next question is, which one of the following statements about successive type of cytokinesis during microsporogenesis is incorrect. The explanation is in successive cytokinesis, the cytoplasm is successively partitioned after each mutative division. A diet stage is thus observed, which consists of two cells embedded within the pollen mother cell wall, which are separated by a callous wall. So, option A. That is, cell plate is formed during each telophase in microspore mother cells. So, this is correct statement. Option B, the four spores nuclei are discrete or isolated in pairs. This is also the correct statement. 
partitioning of cytoplasm occurs through centrifugal progression of cell plate at each telophase and between pairs of nuclei. This is also the correct statement. Six secondary spindles, they are formed after telophase 2 in MMC. This is the false statement. So our correct option is D. The next question is formation of chasmogamous as well as plastogamous flowers are reported in the correct option is D that is Camelina banganesis. This is because uh, this flower produces three types of flowers that is male chasmogamous, hermaphrodite clistogamous and hermaphrodite chasmogamous. The next question is Bambisioni effect is observed during megasporogenesis in this Bambisioni effect was first reported by Bambisioni in 1928. According to this effect, the fusion of spindles of the three chalazal nuclei in Sinomegaspore, they form a triploid nucleus in Fritillaria and Plesia. So, our correct option is B, that is Fritillaria type. The next question is, during daytime, if the CO2 concentration around the leaves increases, as we know, during daytime, if CO2 concentration around the leaves increases, then they directly affect the movement of stomata. As during C3 cycle, carbon dioxide is necessary, so with the increase in carbon dioxide concentration, the stomata will suddenly open in order to get carbon dioxide enter inside. So, our correct option is B, that is, tomato will open suddenly. The next question is, which of the following statements is or are true for H-positive ATPase? First of all, what is H-positive ATPase? It is an important pump in plant cells membrane. This pump acts as a primary transporter by pumping protons out of the cell thereby creating pH and electrical potential difference across plasma membranes. The intracellular pH or cytosolic pH is mainly regulated by H-positive ATPase in the range 7.3 to 7.5 pH. Thus, whenever protons accumulating in the cytoplasm, the activity of H-positive ATPase increases, resulting in expulsion of excess H positive and uh, also it results in generation of protein motif force. So in the given statements, statement A, it uses energy of hydrolysis of ATP is true. Second statement, it maintains a high H positive concentration inside the cell. This is the wrong statement because it maintains low H positive concentration as it removes H positive out of the cell. Uh, Statement C, it is responsible for the maintenance of cytosolic pH in the range of 7.3 to 7.5. This is correct statement. It results in generation of protein motive force. This is also the correct statement. So our statement A, C, D are true. Hence option C is correct. The next question is translocation of sugars from mesophyll cells to sieve tube elements in leaves is known as the correct option is B that is phloem loading. As the sugars such as sucrose produce in mesophyll cells, they move to sieve tubes of the smallest veins of the leaves. Consequently, the concentration of sugars increases in the sieve tubes in comparison to surrounding mesophyll cells. The next question is, during light perception by plants, the process of transfer of energy between pigment molecules is called. This process is known as inductive resonance. So our correct option is B. In this process, when the light energy is absorbed, the electrons get excited. 
from their ground state to their excited state through inductive resonance. When the electrons of chlorophyll A get excited, they actually get released from the molecule. There, the photosynthesis process starts. The next question is, phytotrophins refers to what are phytotrophins? They are defined as the compounds that inhibit plant gravitropic and phototropic responses and the polar transport of oxygen hormone. Hence, they are non-competitive inhibitors of polar oxygen transport. So, our correct option is B. The next question is, gibberlins are the chemical derivatives of Basically, gibberlins are the hormones which are found in the plants as well as fungi. They are diterpene plant hormones from granyl-granyl diphosphate, which is a common C20 precursor for diterpenoids. And these gibberlins are synthesized via terpenoid pathway in the plastids and then they get modified to endoplasmic reticulum and cytoplasm. So, our correct option is B, that is terpenes. The next question is, which of the following is not a characteristic feature of the seedlings exhibiting triple response? Its correct answer is elongated roots. This is because the triple response is a typical phenotype after ethylene treatment, which consists of exaggerations inhibition of root growth and shortened hypocotyls which represent the best characterized ethylene response. So our correct option is C that is elongated roots. The next question is climatric fruits include all the following except in all the options given below grapes are non climatric fruits because they ripen without ethylene and respiration bursts. However, grapes and strawberries harbor several active ethylene receptors. So our correct option is B, that is grapes. The next question is, principal form of carbohydrate translocated by the phloem is, as we all know, Sucrose is the most suitable form of carbohydrate translocation because it is non-reducing as well as chemically stable. So our correct option is A, that is sucrose. The next question is the chemical salicylic hydroxamic acid inhibits. This salicylic hydroxamic acid inhibits the enzyme that is alternative oxidase. This enzyme is present in mitochondrial electron transport chain system of plants, some fungi and protists. This salicylic hydroxamic acid acts as an inhibitor of the enzyme alternative oxidase by blocking the largely uninhibited flow of electrons. So our correct option is B that is alternative oxidase. The next question is spherosomes store. So what are spherosomes? These are the small cellular organelles found in the plant cells that are enclosed by a single membrane. They are mainly responsible for storage and synthesis of lipids. They are obtained from the endoplasmic reticulum and surrounded by phospholipid monolayer. These lipid bodies store triglycerols in the form of oils. So, spherosomes basically store triacylglycerol. So, our correct option is D. The next question is, the main enzyme for nitric oxide production in the plants is, it is nitrate reductase because nitrate reductase, the mitochondrial transport chain and new complex formed between nitrate reductase and Nitrate oxide forming nitrate reductase are the main enzymatic systems that perform this reductive nitric oxide production in the plants. Although the experimental data has led to the hypothesis that 
molybdenum nitrate reductase is the main enzyme which is responsible for nitric oxide production in most of the plants. So a correct option is A that is nitrate reductase. The next question is in the Kresilian acid metabolism photosynthesis occurs during night when stomata are open and carbon dioxide is fixed as. As we know the Kresilian acid metabolism or CAN pathway is a modification of standard C3 pathway that has been selected in plants to cope up with environmental conditions in which water is a limiting factor. These can plants take up carbon dioxide at night but they cannot complete the light mediated steps of photosynthesis. Instead, they produce malic acid that is later used as in substrate to complete the C3 pathway when light is available. So, at night, this carbon dioxide is stored as a 4 carbon compound that is malic acid in the vacuoles. Then, uh, in the daytime, when light is available, the malate is transported to chloroplast where it is converted back to carbon dioxide, which is then used during photosynthesis. So, this carbon dioxide is fixed as malic acid, and a correct option is A that is, malic acid. The next question is the enzyme responsible for carbon fixation in C3 photosynthesis is it is Rubisco that is ribulose 1,5-biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase. This is because Rubisco catalyzes the primary carbon fixation in which a 5 carbon sugar phosphate that is ribulose 1,5-biphosphate and carbon dioxide they are converted to two molecules of three carbon compounds that is three phosphoglycerate. So our correct option is B that is ribulose 1,5-biphosphate carboxylase oxygenase or rubisco. The next question is which one of the following has a spiral metabolic pathway? First of all, what is metabolism? Metabolism involves the generation of energy and synthesis of biological molecules and the met metabolic pathways can follow several paths like spiral pathway, cyclic pathway and linear pathway. As in the given picture, it is clearly shown that the glycolysis follows linear pathway, citric acid cycle follows cyclic pathway and fatty acid biosynthesis follows spiral pathway. A spiral pathway is similar to cyclic pathway in that the same series of enzymes catalyze reactions is repeated many times. It is different from cyclic pathway in that the substrate is lengthened or shortened by the length of a monomer unit each time through the spiral. So here our correct option is D that is petty acid biosynthesis. The next question is which wavelength of light is photosynthetically active radiation for N-oxygenic photosynthetic organisms? So there are two types of photosynthetic organisms. One is oxygenic and other one is N-oxygenic. Most of the oxygenic photosynthetic organisms are able to utilize the same region of solar spectrum that is 400 nanometer to 700 nanometer which is also known as photosynthetically active radiation or PAR. And while the anoxygenic organisms, they absorb strongly in the infrared region in between 700 nanometer to 1000 nanometer. So our correct option is D, that is 760 to 1000 nanometer. The next question is, which one of the following statements regarding genetic transformation of plants is correct? Among all, the statement D, that is, agrobacterium mediated transformation, can be used for both transient expression studies as well as development of stable transgenesis is correct. This is because it was recently demonstrated that agrobacterial infection of plant tissues could occur in either a transient or a stable manner. Rapid transient expression of the plants is suggested to predominantly occur from tDNA copies that are not integrated into the host genome but exhibit high expression levels. While in, uh, in stable transformation normally requires 
several months to obtain the first generation of transformed plants. So our correct option is D. The question is, a circular DNA of 4.36 kb was digested with different restriction enzymes and size of fragments obtained are listed below. The restriction enzymes PST1, EcoR1 and FAL1 give the fragment of size 4.36 kb. On the double digestion, EcoR1 and SAL1 gives two fragments of 3.98 and 0.38 kb and EcoR1 and PST1 gives two fragments of 3.61 and 0.75 kb. Similarly, PST1 and SAL1 gives two fragments of 3.23 and 1.13 kb. Based on the above information, which of the following statement is correct? So, according to the question, we can clearly see that all the restriction enzymes have only one restriction site. So, from single digestion experiment, it is very clear that EcoR1, SAL1 and PST1 each have one restriction site in the given plasmid. So, a plasmid for restriction enzymes PST1 and SAL1 on the basis of the double digestion, two fragments are obtained of size 3.23 kb and 1.13 kb. Now, EcoR1 has two choices. Its site would be at 1.13 or 3.23 kb fragment. So, after that, we split the 3.61 kb fragment into 3.23 and 0.38 kb and the fragment of 3.98 kb into 3.23 kb and 0.75 kb. So we can clearly see that EcoR1 gives a cut in the segment of 1.13 kb fragment. The whole plasmid is shown in the following figure and the restriction site of EcoR1 is between SAL1 and PST1. So according to the question, option C that is EcoR1 is located between PST1 and SAL1 is correct. The next question is, which one of the following promoters is not a consecutive promoter? Firstly, what are promoters? Promoters control the binding of RNA polymerase and transcription factors. Since the promoter region drives transcription of a target site, it therefore determines timing of gene expression and largely defines the amount of recombinant protein that will be produced. Now, what are consecutive promoters? Consecutive promoters are those which are always active. The examples of consecutive promoters are CAMV35S, NOS, that is nobeline synthase, UBI1, while the other type of promoters that is SUC2, they are not always active. They are active under specific circumstances and can be switched from and off to an own state. So they are not called as consecutive promoters. So our correct option is D that is SUC2. The next question is which one of the following statements is incorrect? So among all Statement A, that is BAP, is the most abundantly naturally occurring cytokinemine in the higher plants, is incorrect. This is because this 6-benzyl aminopurine, that is BAP, is a synthetic cytokinemine, not a natural cytokinemine, which together with auxins, elects plant growth and development responses. This BAP is widely used cytokinin supplement to plant growth media such as food medium. So, our correct option is A. The last question is, match the scientists given in list 1 with their discoveries in list 2. So, our first scientist is Larkin and Scofroft. He was the one who championed the somaclonal variations as a method for crop improvement. So, our option A of list 1 matches with option 3 of list 2. Our next scientist is Arthijan. He first time used the phrase edible vaccines and referred to any foods 
typically plants that produces vitamins, proteins or other nourishment that act as a vaccine to stimulate the immune system against a certain disease. So option B of list 1 matches with option 4 of list 2. Her next scientist is F.C. Stewart. He in the late 1950s demonstrated that somatic cells of cultivated carrot can produce embryo-like structures in the aseptic culture. In the aseptic cultures, basically they demonstrated the somatic embryogenesis. So option C of list 1 matches with option 2 of list 2. Her last scientist is Piane. Piane hypothesized that the daffodil gene encoding pyothene synthesis, one of the two genes used to develop the golden rhinus, which was the limiting step in beta carotene. So option D of list 1 matches with option 1 of list 2. Accordingly, our option C is correct. Thank you. Do like, share and subscribe the channel.